this video, we're delving into a world of innovation, precision, and creativity as we unbox and assemble the highly anticipated A1 Max from Creality and part, it's part of their flagship series of printers. A bit larger than its sibling, the K1, this powerhouse of a 3D printer boasts an expansive build volume of 300 millimeters, ultra-fast print speeds, and advanced features that cater to both professionals and hobbyists alike. Let's not waste any more time. Inside this box, we've got the K1 Max itself, a set of tools, a user's manual, and everything we need to embark on our 3D printing journey. I'm Bill, and let's get this printer pushing plastic. So to save some time, I took the printer out of the box. Nobody needs to see somebody cutting open a box, pulling a printer out, and sitting it on top of the table. As you can see, the machine itself is pretty big. What I pulled out of the box is the glass lid and the instruction manual. Looks to be some type of sticker set in there, too. Now what we have up top, a lot of packing material. Here we have the control panel, power cord, handle about pulling some of this out. There's some packing foam, don't need that. More packing foam, we're not going to need that. And now we have a box. Lift that right out. That also is attached to the packing foam. And this would be our box, I believe, of tools and accessories. Get it open and we'll see what we have. Okay, so we do have a box of tools. We have a full of filament Reality's Hyper Series, which they recommend for these printers. That's pretty cool. We have the brackets for the door. We have a hot end. We have the pool holder. And last but not least, we have some rubber feet. Let's get to it. Okay, inside the machine, we have a little bit more packing material. Take out. Get rid of that. Don't need that anymore. And here we have the bed plate. I'm just going to leave that in there for now. Not to that. Take it out when we need to. The first step here, we're going to install our touch screen. We're going to pull off this piece of tape that's holding the ribbon cable in place. And we're going to plug that right into the back. With the ribbon cable popped in, we're going to slide these two fingers into these two slots. And just gonna gently wiggle them down until they're in place. So I have the printer spun around to the back. And what I'm gonna do is put the spool holder on. All you do is put it in, but basically one turn, locks in place. Nice, you, you gotta like that. Up here, we have a tag, tear off sticker before you. This here is your filter. A lot of people say it's irrelevant in a printer like this. I'm not going to get into that debate. You're there for a reason. Um, depends what your setup is and what type of material you're printing, I suppose. So here we do have our filter. They're nice and neat. Pull right out. I'll show you. 
we have our filter fan and i'll just do pop that right back in place behind that little nub sticking out actually i guess i should have pulled out from this material right here the next step while i'm back here see it putting in the power cord and like any printer just pops right in there now the one part i did not find in the setup manual was installing the handle how hard can it be right you have a bracket that goes to the inside and this long edge will actually sit flush with the outer edge of the door have your handle itself two holes that's going to mount to the outside now there is plastic film on both sides of the door you're going to have to peel that back on both sides screw it comes with two screws and a little grommet not much to do there what you do take your door hand uh, bracket push that through top one actually so far this is proving to be the hardest part of the whole in or setup that's a good thing take your allen wrench and tighten that up and we'll just our allen wrench and tighten that up the next step for us is to remove the three packing screws they're inside holding the bed plate down. Got one here in the back, one here on the left side, and one over here on the right side. Obviously, they're indicated by the yellow arrows. So let's get these pulled out and get going here. Okay, I have all three screws removed. One from the left, one from the right. This one, I, one here in the rear, you can see how it's bent. That wasn't real easy to get out. I wanna show you this in the back. See the two screws on either side of that hole. That empty hole is where I removed the silver screw from, the packing screw. But if you're not lined up properly, you can actually get into one of those two and remove it by accident. But you wanna make sure you pull out a silver screw, not a black screw. Now, it also comes with these nice rubber feet and they go on real easy. All you do is tilt the machine and slide them up under onto the feet that already exist. And that's all there is to that. All right, let's power this up and see what happens. All right, finally, we're into some good stuff. We're gonna select English. Remove the screws, we did that earlier. That would be the three packing screws. Okay. Keep in the blue cube, their debris, good. And we're gonna to connect to my network. There it is. All right, we're connected. And I'm on the East Coast, so I want minus five. I'm not gonna bind my device yet. Do the self inspection. Let it run. We're not going to touch anything. So while we wait for it to finish its self-test and diagnostics, let's see what's in the box. 
First, we got a spare hot end. That's pretty nice. You got to like that. You have, I guess it's a sticker sheet. I'm not really sure. Looks like a sticker sheet. We have the after sales service card. Your warranty. Quick installation guide. And now for the accessories box. Let's see what's in this. Okay, so first we have some lube. The almighty filament snips. We have the tool set with the Allen wrenches. Oh, nice. Got an M6 uh, wrench in there for changing out the nozzle. That's cool. I like that. Wow. A real wrench with some meat to it. 12 millimeters. 10 millimeters on one, 12 on the other. We have our print scraper. That looks to be a nozzle cleaner. Flash drive. And glue stick. Whether you like glue or not, I'm using it. That's a pretty good accessories pack. You gotta like that. Looks like they included everything. And let's get back and see what's going on with our printer. Okay, self test complete. All right, okay. Okay, so I wanna load the, my filament now. And as always, I'm gonna cough the tip. 45 degree angle. I'm going to feed that up. Go as far as I can with it. And if you're about the direction, Nice diagram on here, which tells you which way the roll should turn. Putting one together, you don't have it go in this direction. Doing it backwards. Now, the next step I want to show you involves what's not in the inflation. Let's take a look at the inflation manual real quick. And what you see here is just tell you the filament until it stops. That's it far as they go with filament instruction. But what they don't tell you, what's on top of them. So this is the part that they're not showing you in the manual, is once you have your filament pushed through, as far as it'll go, you gotta actually lock the extruder. And right here is your lock. If you look from the front of the uh, printer, left is locked. Right is unlocked. So right now we have that in the locked position, and we should not be able to pull that back out the back. Okay, let's move on to the next step for loading filament. All right. Okay, now the next step, what we're going to got to extract some filament. I'm going to go to our settings menu here, flash retract, and we're going to hit extrude. And it will automatically bring the printer up to temperature. And it should extrude, assuming I have this loaded properly. Let's find out. There we go. We have some extruding filament. Now, remove the filament. We would unlock the arm. And we would press the retract button. Then pull the filament out from the back. And that's all there is to that. Grab the all right, so we're all set up. Let's see what this bad boy can do. Let's print a bench sheet. We're going to do what's on the system already. And there's our bench sheet right there. We'll hit print. And let's see how we do. Back in 13 minutes. The bench sheet doesn't look too bad. Now, I'm not sure what's up with the bottom. 
it looks like a small brim, but feels thicker than what I'm used to. So I sliced and printed my own Benchy, the Creality Slicer with the default settings for the printer and the Hyper PLA filament. This one printed at 220 degrees, took 43 minutes. This was 13. I printed pretty clean. It looks good, and I'm not seeing that brim like feature on the bottom. I'm happy with what I'm seeing. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, I thought that Creality put a lot of thought and effort into the package. It arrived as expected. No broken glass. No dented cabinet. You gotta like that. The assembly was a breeze. It probably took somewhere between 5 to 10 minutes. There were a few things that weren't covered in the instruction manual, like installing the door handle and a full set of instructions for loading the filament. Other than that, I thought it was an easy and painless process. A lot easier than assembling the Ender series of printers from the old days. Now, I'm looking forward to putting this printer through a few prints, a few different filament types and brands to see what it can really do. I'll post a video with those results in uh, my review of that. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, hit the like button and let me know down below in the comments. Or if you have a K1 or a K1 Max, I'd like to know your thoughts on these printers too. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.